uh, families are coming together that maybe they haven't spent time together the entire year and now all of a sudden they're going to break bread together. It can bring about a lot of communication challenges. It can bring about a lot of anxiety for people. And so there are specific steps that people can take for self-care and to help manage the communication and energy. It is time, my friends, time to let it shine. Alongside Lucinda K. I'm Dave Erickson, and the holidays are hours away, it feels like. It's <laughs> knocking at the door, Lucinda, and you got a great topic for today, and it's, I don't know, we're preparing for the holidays. we got to do that emotionally and mentally. Yeah, for sure, and physically. You know, the holiday season, that's really how we should be thinking about it as a season and not just one day. It's about celebrating connections. It's about reconnecting. It's about giving glory to the lives that we are blessed with. So there are a lot of wonderful, glorious, golden moments that come out of the holiday season. And there are also some real challenges that can come up this time of year. And those challenges, is it, is it, uh, I think sometimes initially I'll think expectations, mm. uh, almost forced, forced giving, putting yourself in a position where you, you have to be at a certain level when maybe mm. you don't feel like it, but the atmosphere almost, um, uh, forces you to be something you're maybe if you're not ready for it, you know what I mean? Sure. Yes, I do. Uh, if people really give in to that sense of obligation, then what's the point? First of all, nothing is supposed to be perfect. Second of all, gift giving is not all of our gifts. Uh, third of all, there are no rules to how we connect with other human beings. So the more you can really use a more realistic perspective this time of year and really use a filter that's about gratitude and about looking after each other and not about materialism, not about having the perfect lights, not about those um, those material elements. That's not what the season is about. It's about sparkle and love and kindness. It's hard to avoid the commercialization of this holiday season when all around you it's about, you know, this is on sale. We've got to go to the right party. We have to dress a certain way. We have to stock up on all these presents. And that creates a lot of stress mm -hmm. uh, individually and on families. And it's hard to find that joy in the season where there should be joy. Yes. And again, that's really about mindfulness. We have to be self-aware to recognize uh, that all of that brings on stress. So for example, I'm not a shopper any time of the year. And so for me, if I go out shopping this time of year, it's really going to just makes me feel edgy and it makes me feel sad because I think of all of the global projects we work on where people have nothing and people are getting so caught up in buying this, that, or the other plastic piece of whatever is the latest trend, you know? So being aware enough every day, and sometimes you have to be self-aware moment by moment, you recognize that that's not making me feel really good. That's making me feel like part of the hype, or that's making me feel stressed, and then you step back. Besides the materialism, there are a lot of other triggers that can really put you in challenging spots during the holiday season and sometimes even dangerous places because the holidays can bring about um, feelings, all those emotions of sadness from sad things that have happened in your life. You can have really some unhappy childhood memories that come from holidays. Those of us who grew up in dysfunctional families, it can be a trigger for our memories as to why those were challenging when we were kids. Um, it's a symbol of how your life has changed. Maybe you've gone through a divorce or a death in the family or you've moved. Often the holiday season is a symbol of life's changes and that can bring on stress instead of joy. And then the opposite is true. You're wanting to make change but everything remains the same. You may have been putting out exerting all kinds of energy to make change and you're still where you were last year. And that can trigger some challenging moments and make you feel full of anxiety or stress. I think the holidays sometimes can also serve as a band-aid or just masking the reality of, of facing 
what is really around you. Like, okay, during this time of year, we'll put on a, a good face. We'll put on, you know, that strong, the strong shield of I'm courageous, I'm feeling good, but then it goes, goes away, in which we can talk about that in weeks to come of how do you deal with the reality of once this, this mask of whatever is going on right now is gone. The decompress when it's all yeah. flowing out of you yeah. and feel spent. Yeah, we can talk about that in coming weeks for sure. Um, you know, human beings take a lot out of each other. And so this time of year can really boil up um, old arguments, old anger, resentment. Uh, families are coming together that maybe they haven't spent time together the entire year, and now all of a sudden they're going to break bread together. It can bring about a lot of communication challenges. It can bring about a lot of anxiety for people. And so there are specific steps that people can take for self care and to help manage the communication and energy. Yeah, navigating the holidays and making it successful. I guess it depends on how you define a successful holiday yeah. and the the family dynamics that surround it. And I know you have, I think it's seven different steps or uh, things to follow to hopefully get through this unscathed or the best we possibly can. Uh, you want to begin that now? Sure. I mean, there are a lot more than seven yes. steps, uh, but there are some. there's a basic foundation of uh, steps of action you can take to help take care of yourself and to help manage any kinds of dynamics. And by the way, I define family as however you create it. It doesn't matter if it's in the same gene pool or not. So bringing groups of people together in our diverse world we live in is really a beautiful moment and it can be a challenging moment. But some of those steps are, first of all, just to be gentle. Be gentle with yourself and gentle with others. And so err on that side of, of easiness instead of on that side of harshness or a sharp word or, or taking everything so personally, you know? So be gentle with each other. And always, you know, I teach the art of the exhale. And so if you will practice some of your breathing techniques before you step into these situations, when you are in the situation, if somebody speaks something that isn't really what you're digging, isn't your style, just take a moment of quiet and give me a great exhale. And then making sure you're focused in your conversations. A holiday meal is not the time to change Aunt Edna, who has always been a brat, right? Or something worse, like a racist or, you know, has, has always been full of anger, the holiday dinner is not where you're going to change Aunt Edna's point of view. The holiday dinner is where you are going to behave as you want to be perceived and so demonstrate the behavior you expect from other people. So is that a matter of, of kind of just uh, biting your tongue when the, the uncle who's coming in from out of town comes in with his prejudice or his political views and you feel that awkwardness in the air like, do I engage in this? Because if I do, it could take us down the wrong path. Yes, you have a couple of techniques there. One, yes, engage in dialogue. And that may be the style of your family, that bantering, right? And that's how you sort of warm up with each other to get through to the other side. But be mindful of the words you're choosing to speak and be mindful of the amount of energy you're willing to exert. So you know exactly what's going to happen, right? So plan ahead. How, I'm, how am I going to behave in this situation? How much do I want to get into this situation? And if needed, don't be afraid to just walk away. You know, if there's a commercial on right now, it's some, um, you know, for jewelry or something. Um, but it shows a family like engaged in this bantering and lots of energy and the couple catch each other's eye and they step outside and they take their moment together. Yes, it's to sell a watch or something, but it's also really a good example of it's fine to step away. It's fine to step out of the situation. Go ahead. <laughs> I was thinking, are there certain things you can do to uh, just, well, I, I think of that relative who who might want to start talking about a certain political party. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the timing of when you engage that's important. If it's early on in the dinner and you know, I still have three more hours, it's probably <laughs> not the right time to get into it because what happens if there is no resolution, there's going to be an awkward two hours. Mm -hmm. Is is there a, a technique, like you said, step away? Is there something to kind of like nod your head and say, I, I, I see your point and then try to change the conversation or change the topic? Oh, yes, for sure. Some of your sentences are, uh, 
I hear you. Mm. I hear you. Yeah. And you don't have to add anything more to it. Just, I hear you. So that's a sentence. Another sentence is, how about if we talk about this next time? Or how about you say, um, we're probably not going to agree on this, and that's okay. Really, we all need to lighten up a little bit, right? Like a lot of these moments are just blips on the radar screens of our lives. And so lighten up a little bit and don't take everything so seriously and so personally. On the note of lightening up, how about create moments for laughter? Because the more we laugh, the more joyful we behave, and the more we're a reflection of each other. If we're laughing, we can get other people laughing. So sometimes you have to get really intentional about creating laughter. Don't wait for somebody to entertain you. I had a fabulous assistant, Valerie, and she was so great. Every day she'd be on the search in between her real work for little nuggets that were going to make me laugh out loud. So like autocorrects or, you know, funny images. She was so great about finding elements to cre help create laughter for the two of us in the office when it was getting stressful. So laughter is key. And creating the family that you want to be around. You know, you and I in the news business, I honestly don't have really strong holiday traditions because all of the years in the news business, I worked every Christmas. I never had a Christmas off. So we didn't even put up decorations in those days. We, uh, we would just eat a great meal, perhaps, on my break. Um, and then when I got the girls, I realized, oh, by now I've just created family, right? Wherever we are, we create family. And so youngsters and elders. That's a really diverse group of people that we get to call family. And when you are intentional about the people you spend your time with, it goes a long way in keeping your soul safe and serene. It goes a long way in creating great energy in your life instead of bad energy. You know, if you have toxic people in your life, friends or family, you don't have to spend time with them. You can say no thank you. It's about giving up that obligation that we talked about when we first uh, went, on, went on the air today. Don't feel obligated to spend time in places that aren't healthy for you. Instead, choose to be your very best self and then spend time with other people where that's their goal as well. Yeah, I see it as choosing to be around people who you enjoy their time, you enjoy their conversation, you enjoy their attitude, and then it, it works on itself versus that person who comes in and not poisons, that's kind of a strong word, but really throws off the balance, mm -hmm. uh, the harmony of what should be uh, a positive, joyful time of year. And I, I kind of translate that or carry that over into other parts of my life as well. Okay. You know, it's not just the holidays, but who do you consider to be someone who's going to be there for you? Mm -hmm. And as, as you mentioned about the news business, uh, you have instant family in a newsroom. Yeah. And so many years, whether it was Thanksgiving or Christmas, uh, because I was on my own throughout my travels, is I get invited over and to a co-anchor's house. Oh, didn't we have the best potlucks? <laughs> earlier in the day before the newscast or before we had to report to, to work. And then yeah. even at work, you have that family and you all have a shared experience because you're both all of you are, in a way, sacrificing the time away mm -hmm. to be together. And so, like you said, it doesn't have to be genes. It doesn't have to be blood. It has to be, it's a different type of uh, camaraderie. Yes. And then, you know, nourish yourself through the season, just as you should in regular life. Stress comes when people are eating a lot of extra food and sugar that they dorm don't normally eat. Their schedules change, and so now they're not keeping up with their exercise. Uh, they may be drinking more alcohol, so now they're dehydrated. So you have to be really mindful about all of those things. If you are not managing your self-care, then it's going to make it even more challenging to handle these conflict moments or these challenging moments. So be mindful of taking care of yourself physically as well as mentally. Do you almost have to psych yourself up for that maybe three or four hour period when you know you have to be your very best self? Me personally, yeah, uh, I decide. I do decide what the behavior is going to look like because I get tired, just like other people. Every now and then, I get sick, but not very often. Uh, sometimes it's been a cranky morning or a challenging morning, and so I decide 
who I'm going to be in that moment. And I carry out that behavior. So it's still Lucinda K, but I know what Ms. Professional looks like. I know what Ms. Joyful looks like. I know what Ms. Cranky looks like. So I get to choose who I want to be in that moment. And I carry out the behavior, even if I'm not truly feeling it in that hot second. I like that. It's being accountable for your actions that day. And you said, make the choice. You have a choice every day. Yep. And it's not just the holidays. You wake up and you talk about it. Today, I'm going to be this. Yep. I, I have an attitude. I have a, a plan. I have a to-do list, whatever it is. Choose to be your yep. best self that day. And maybe during the holidays, choose to be a good family member, to be a yep. good good husband or wife or brother or sister, nephew, niece, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Choose to love on people. Choose to be kind to each other. And man, then the road is just so much easier. Great techniques to avoid, or avoid, let's be positive, let's be proactive, to have a successful holiday season with family and friends. Yeah, let's embrace really what the season is all about. Love, kindness, blessings, gratitude, and all kinds of sparkle. And you just uh, pass along some extra sparkle by gifting your daughters a new poppy. Oh my gosh, they're so excited. I should have brought her down to show you that. She's <laughs> a little eight pounder and they named her Luna because uh, she is all black, but then this silvery lining. So she's like the moon lighting up a very dark night. So why'd you choose a puppy this Christmas, this holiday season? Uh, she is just over a year old. So... I on purpose did not choose a puppy okay. because who do you think will have to take care of her? In the Mama. Day? That's right. <laughs> and uh, they have been asking for a dog for a long time. Our dog of 19 years died a few years ago and, you know, it took some time to recalibrate. And really, they could use a little bean to look after that helps make their souls feel calm and serene and that they can just love on. A new responsibility at their age too, probably, right? To teach yeah. them that? Yes, that's right. And they already have done a great job of that in the last <laughs> since last night. They've had a few situations to take care of and they performed beautifully. Excellent. What about you? Do you have something exciting planned? Well, we moved into a new home and uh, it's almost done. And we're having people over for Christmas Eve for the first time. So it's been a a big prep time of getting the lights up, getting a Christmas tree and, and getting the house just right to make that first impression. And it's large enough finally to be able to host uh, a number of families, which makes us proud and uh, not, not, not pressure. At least I don't feel any pressure, but it's like, here, welcome to our home. We, we want to host something because we've been the guests for so many years. Right. Embracing the gift of hospitality. Yeah, yeah. So it, there's still some navigating to go with the stress of it. Uh, maybe having, ex, not for myself, but having expectations that are pretty high of we have to do it just right. I don't think we have to be just right. No, um, how about let's set those down right now. I agree. I agree. There's two, there's two of us, <laughs> but I agree. Yeah, let's just uh, go because, with the flow. Because people are coming to see you too. Yeah. They want to be in your presence. They want to hear your stories and they want to share stories. And everything else can fall away because you are the sparkle that's going to light up the room. Well, it's the same thing about inviting people over who um, are going to be open and giving and not ju judgmental. Mm -hmm. And those are the kind of people I want to surround myself anyway. And if we find or if I find or recognize there's some judgment going on, maybe though that kind of reveals to me the type of people I don't want to be around. And so sure. I guess I'm, I'm not looking for it, but I'll be aware of it. Sure. And I want to see who is genuine. Yeah. I'll recognize and you that. know, a sentence in that moment that because we'll need these sentences too are, um, can you please change your tone or that's not really a very kind remark. So when people mm -hmm. start talking and maybe they start getting a more, lu more lubricated with their beverages and, you know, then some of their true personality traits come out, it's okay to hold people accountable, being gentle, using a light touch, lightening up. None of that means you don't hold people accountable. Yeah but you can handle it in a kind, constructive way. Very good. Well, Lucinda, great topic today. Thanks very much. I, I wish you and yours a wonderful yes. holiday season. Happy holiday season. And really, man, just remember to feel all that light and let it shine. Alongside Lucinda K, I'm Dave Erickson. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Don't let me hear you say light, taking you nowhere. Angel. Look at that sky,
life's begun. Nights are warm and the days are young. Come, brother, 